Chapter 7. Three is indeed a magic number. I hate it. What's wrong with it? You look perfect. I look like I should be the next mascot of Lucky Charms. What I was complaining about so seriously to Margaret was a sad excuse for a new fedora. I mean, this thing was pathetic. What I had was a genuine 1930s, 1950s fedora. It was beautiful. I'm getting emotional just remembering it. Excuse me for a second. Breathe, Danny, breathe. Okay, I'm all right now. What this Irish fedora looked like was like a plaid collection of blacks and whites and greens. Also, it had too much of a modern feel to it. But Margaret bought this for me, so I should just be grateful and finish the adventure. In a couple chapters. However, by this point, I was stumped. I told the group to hold up for a second as I sat down on a bench. I unzipped my satchel and looked inside. There was the stone with the Celtic knot and the necklace of shamrocks. I didn't know what came next. I mean, I had a feeling, but I wasn't quite sure. Flynn walked over and sat down looking at an Ireland tourist guide trying to cheer me up. You know, Danny, you and I should go on more adventures together. Just think of the places we could go. I mean, there is even more to see in Ireland here. The Cliffs of Moor, or as I like to call them, the Cliffs of Insanity. By the way, for those of you who don't know, Flynn was meaning the Cliffs of Moor were the filming location for the Cliffs of Insanity in The Princess Bride. Just a heads up for the two of you who out there who had not seen this, if you really haven't, stop listening. Just stop listening. Okay, well you can stay, but then go watch the movie. Moving on. Let's see. There's all these pubs on the island, and this giant statue of St. Patrick. I then slowly brought my head up from my hand and looked straight into Flynn's eyes. By the blood of Kukulin, that's it! That has to be it! We have to get to that statue. Margaret, Mary, would you be willing to drive us to get to the end of this adventure? Danny boy, Flynn me lad, it would be our pleasure. Our absolute pleasure. Great. However, Margaret, would you mind if we keep this whole Danny boy thing under wraps? Not a problem. Well, maybe. We will be crossing into Northern Ireland, but I'm sure we'd be fine. Come on, everyone. We've got the treasure to uncover. We quickly all piled into the car and drove all the way to the most amazing statue of St. Patrick I have ever seen. This thing was massive. I couldn't believe the height of it. Wow. All I could say was wow. So we made our way directly up to the statue and I looked at it, trying to find some sort of way that we could access it. That's right, access it. Get inside. I started running around it. Flynn soon started to join with me. What are you two doing? Mary asked us in surprise. Looking for a secret passage, I responded in a heaving breath. A secret passage? Margaret asked. There's always a secret passage, Flynn soon answered. Don't start with me again, Margaret pleaded. Flynn grabbed me and we both stopped running. Give it up, Danny, there is no secret passage. While we were running, we must have tapped at least every square on the base of this at least ten times. As much as I hated to admit it, Flynn was right. There was no way of getting inside. I then stared at the statue again. I looked higher and higher, and then it hit me. It seemed too obvious, but maybe it was that simple. I realized that there was a small embedded shape in the center of St. Patrick's Crook. It seemed like a spot that a small stone could fit in. I had to go up. Margaret, do me a favor and see if you can get me a really tall ladder. A ladder? You think there's an entrance? I don't know yet but I do know that we will be one step closer to discovering St. Patrick's Cross. Margaret then whispered into Mary's ear, and they went off to go find a ladder. Something going on? Mary? Flynn asked. Oh no, Margaret was just telling me where she was going. It felt like forever, until Margaret finally returned with a big enough ladder, lying on a flatbed so that I could reach the crook. What kept you? You try being the regular Irishman explaining to the Northern Irish that you need a ladder to examine the St. Patrick statue. Then try finding the right height. We all took the ladder and carefully placed it up against the statue. We opened it, and while they all held below, I started to climb. 
Now, I don't have a serious phobia like some people and family members, but I will say that I wasn't the biggest fan of heights. I climbed and climbed, and soon I was at a point, yes, near the top, where I could reach the crook. I opened up my satchel and pulled out the stone. I raised my arm and placed it into the embedded part of the crook. I then noticed that sections of the crook deepened. I took out the necklace of shamrocks and then thought about what I had to do with it. I then got it. Sometimes, St. Patrick's Crook is seen with some sort of vine around it. I slowly and carefully, not trying to lose my balance, broke the necklace at a point and started to wrap it around the crook, placing it in the deepened parts. As soon as I was done, a noise came from the bottom of the ladder. Apparently, a section of the base had fallen down and collapsed. Flynn looked inside and saw that there was a pulley system inside. He shrugged his shoulders and began to, well, pull. As he pulled, I noticed that the shamrock that was in St. Patrick's other hand began to detach and descend down to the ground. I know, weird, right? The shamrock got closer to the ground, and I started down the ladder and tried to catch up with it. Both the shamrock and I made it down safely to the ground. Thanks for asking. The shamrock lay on the ground, and I noticed that there were four creases in it now. This made it look like it was split into four parts. Like a cross. Now what? Margaret and Mary both asked anxiously. Well, I've come to the conclusion that St. Patrick's Cross is not exactly a cross. It only looks like a cross. In fact, you're looking at it right now. The shamrock? Flynn asked. Look at the shape. The shape, it makes perfect sense. St. Patrick used the shamrock to explain the Trinity. Some saints have their own cross that they make in a specific place, or, or it has, has a specific shape or, or, or meant something to them. The shamrock is St. Patrick's cross. Now I just had to open it. Maybe we have to think about the word cross again. You're not actually going to. Please, I played John Newman in a play once. Maybe some priestly abilities wore off. I raised my hand over the stone and basically blessed it. That's right, I blessed a rock. Now you're probably thinking, Danny, have you lost your mind? You can't just go up and bless a rock and hope to find a preserved piece of Irish Catholicism. Well, I'm the author of this story, and I'm telling you that once I moved my hand vertically, then horizontally across that stone, it opened. Alright, I'll come clean. I really just swiped two fingers along the creases. Everyone calm down. Once the stone was separated, we all peered inside, and there it lay. The shamrock of St. Patrick, his cross the one he actually used when he explained Christianity to the Irish. It's the power of three. The stone, the necklace, and now the shamrock. I guess three is indeed a magic number. <laughs>